As some continue to instigate a conflict with Russia, we now have a former director at the State Department saying that we should bomb Syria for the sake of Ukraine. Syrian girl, a.k.a. Mimi Alaham, is here to address these issues and so much more. She joins us now via Skype. Thanks for joining us, Mimi. Thank you for having me. It's All been right. time to see. Yeah, I know. It's been too long, too long. So let's get straight into it. I know you have a lot to talk about, and I'll try to shut up and let you make your points, but I want to get your comments on this first. We have this article on Infowars.com, Bomb Syria for Ukraine's Sake. And this is Anne-Marie Slaughter. She is the former director of policy and planning for the U.S. State Department. And she said basically that the U.S. needs to uh, start banning, or Obama uh, more in particular, needs to start bombing and showing his uh, use of force to pretty much put the Russians in check. And she thinks one of the good places to start would be Syria. What is your comment on that? Uh, I think, you know, it's really a window into how government, U.S. government policymakers think. And she was the head director of the, um, of this. The policy, policy U.S. Yeah, State yes. Department. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, in specifically, uh, she was suggesting to use the humanitarian resolution, the uh, humanitarian relief resolution that was supposed to pressure both sides to break the sieges on the cities that um, they were holding. So both the Syrian government and the ins insurgents or Al-Qaeda terrorists have been using uh, siege tactics on the cities that the other person controls. And um, in Aleppo, it's the insurgency, they recently actually cut off water supplies to the entirety of the, the portion of of Aleppo that's controlled by the government, which has millions of people living inside it. Whereas in Homs, you had the general amnesty where a lot of the civilians were taken out of the city. And now there's, there's hardly any of even the insurgents left. Many of them surrendered and there's a siege there. But of course, you know, this UN resolution about getting humanitarian relief into the Syrian cities that are under siege, of course, it's going to be selectively um, you know, enforced, enforced precisely. And it's, it's in fact, according to Anne-Marie Slaughter, that this resolution can be used to attack Syria and bomb the country. And of course, destroy all of the infrastructure that might have still been standing after you know, three years of war. So those of us who are cynical enough to realize that in politics, uh, civilians actually are the least of the uh, government politicians concern, mm -hmm. then they know that this UN resolution is, of course, more about military strategy. And, you know, this is highlighted as one of those, uh, again, one of those things that they're going to use to uh, help bring aid to the insurgency, to, to break sieges, to allow uh, troop movements. And, of course, this can be used to attack Syria. So as this um, crazy woman suggests, and of course, this uh, this new thing she's saying, in addition to bombing Syria, which she suggests, we also know that the U.S. is funding the Al Qaeda rebels in Syria. And uh, Mimi, you and I have talked about this briefly uh, beforehand, talking about the different groups of the Syrian rebels. Just you know, for a base understanding to uh, people who may not know, what's the difference between the various Syrian rebel groups out there? Okay, so the name that people will recognize a lot is the FSA which is supposed to be the moderate rebels. And notice they don't use the word secular, they use the word moderate because mm -hmm. the FSA is still uh, religiously leaning um, to this Salafi Wahhabi ideology that Al-Qaeda also holds, but they say moderate because they're willing to work with the United States um, you know, openly, whereas Al-Qaeda is more underhand with its working for it. But in fact, this group, this FSA that we've, uh, all been talking about for so many years has, in fact, the majority of it have changed to a different group now called the Islamic Front. This Islamic Front has groups such as Ahrar al-Sham in it that was founded by um, an Al-Qaeda member that was uh, once, I believe, in Guantanamo Bay. Mm. Um, Ahrar al-Sham is not designated as a terrorist group by the United States, which is interesting, even though um, it's it's got al-Qaeda affiliations. So this is one of the groups in the Islamic Front, which is now the moderate rebels, is Ahrar al-Sham. And they work quite openly with a group that the U.S. Ha government has designated 
as Al Qaeda, the sort of like the scapegoat group, even though many of the other ones have very much the same tactics and ideology. Mm -hmm. But Jabhat al Nusra, um, the Islamic Front, which is now the main moderate insurgent group, is working openly with Jabhat al Nusra, aka Al Qaeda. And we saw this in, in Kassab, we're seeing it in Homs right now. Homs is mainly the like the vast vast majority of the fighters are Jabhat al-Nusra, they're Al-Qaeda. So um, it's very interesting, but the media, they love to point to the fact that the, the insurgents are fighting this third group known as ISIS, um, the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. Also, this group started off in Iraq in 2006, 2007, came later in the war, and it was quite, uh, basically just killed Shia Iraqis and put bombs in marketplaces, nothing more. But um, yes, I, this the media loves to highlight the fact that there's rebel infighting. The moderate rebels are fighting this ISIS, which was Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. Now it's just even worse than Al Qaeda. They, the media is saying. But the the fact of the matter is, the the moderate rebels are working with one faction of Al Qaeda, Jabhat al Nusra against another faction of Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and the media is trying to paint this as moderates versus Al-Qaeda, because of course, um, it's, it, the fact that the US has been backing Al-Qaeda has been so discrediting um, mm -hmm. these last three years. And it's a big deal, I don't know how the media is where you are, but here in the States, they'll show a video of Al-Qaeda rebels with the black Al-Qaeda flag, and then say it's Assad, or they say it's some other group, when they clearly are flying the flag, they even have little watermarks in the video so you know that, that it's Al-Qaeda. It's just completely ridiculous. And another thing that's going on, Mimi, I want to get your comment on, we have this article, FBI informant directed hack attacks on Iran, Syria, and Pakistan. Now, Mimi, this is basically an article talking about how these various hacker groups, such as Anonymous and LulzSec, can be infiltrated because, you know, of course, this organization such as Anonymous, you don't know who's who's in it, right? So anybody can put on a Guy Fox mask and sit on the on the YouTube screen and just say, hey, I'm representing this agency, I'm representing that agency. And so these guys get infiltrated. And now we see these hack attacks targeting Syria, Iran and other countries. Uh, I haven't seen the article, but I know for a fact that some of the Anonymous uh, members that have been their identity has been exposed have turned to work for the fbi i know that lulsec uh, uh one of the members of lulsec came out and exposed one of them but also there's some that like remain unnamed um they run of course there's twitter accounts there's a very popular one called anonymous operations and they have uh, many thousands and tens of thousands of followers of course you don't know who runs these things but they direct uh, their audience to what they deem to be worthy causes. And of course, these causes always seem to happen to be ones that the U.S. State Department support as well. Of course. So um, I know also, I just wanted to make one other point about that, that when the U.S. State Department, uh, well, um, excuse me, no, more specifically, when the NSA and the CIA target people and gain information about them from maybe uh, defectors or uh, blackmailing people um, and, and technologically as well using Google, of course, and Microsoft, as we saw in the, the leaks that exposed Microsoft by the Syrian the Electronic Army. Mm -hmm. um, they, they then get these anonymous groups to pretend to have hacked something and release the, the information about um, other hackers identities to basically get them killed yeah I mean it's it yeah you know about this as much as we do here in the states and it's just a whole big deal and it's because we see all these groups who that's the problem with these groups and I said it before is because you don't really know who's in it so anybody can be turned anybody could just say it could be a straight-up FBI agent somebody who's not even been turned just gets up there and says hey I'm anonymous you know and I know we have you know many uh, hacktivists as they like to be called who do good work and they're trying to release information, have the uh, the Freedom of Information Act and so forth. But you have these problems persist. Now, Mimi, I've been uh, asking the question, so I want you to leave us uh, with just whatever you think is relevant. Well, um, I'm always uh, on the topic of hacking. I'm always uh, curious as to why they always say that uh, Russia and China are he helping the Syrian hackers and the Syrian Electronic Army when, if, when they've been uh, designated as a bigger threat than even Russia or China. So that's one topic I'm interested in. But more importantly, 
I wanted to, to talk about um, what's going to happen in Syria in the future, what might happen, um, what might be the next step that they they use to attack the country sure. um, in its fight against Al-Qaeda. Uh, I think that the insurgency is on its last thread. Um, I don't think any weapons that or training that they're, the media is coming out with, the CIA is initiating, etc., is going to affect the outcome. However, I, the thing that worries me is last time, I, as I said on the show, that the U.S.'s uh, government's main concern, main interest in Syria, not humanitarian, at the time is, was just to get rid of Syria's chemical weapons. And then as we saw in Libya and Iraq, the scenario afterwards, you know, 10 years later, they would come back and just devastate the country once again. Mm-hmm. That's what happened with Iraq. And I'm just, I'm not sure what will happen after the chemical weapons are gone. And of course, the, the uh, U.S. Uh, mouthpiece, government mouthpieces uh, are always, you know, quacking that uh, the Syria is not removing them fast enough. And I wonder what they have planned for after the, they're removed. That's pretty much... That's pretty much it. The, yes, that's pretty much the only thing that could change the outcome, which is a victory for Syria against this Al-Qaeda, um, these fanatics that are backed by... By the um, states. The states. So and I mean, you guys state. could definitely get a, a easier victory if we would stop funding these people. And I'm glad to see that people are at least starting to acknowledge it because we see even mainstream outlets now picking up these stories such as NPR. I mean, it's you know, the sugar-coated kind of reports, but at least they're presenting this to a, a, a wide mass audience. And now, Mimi, I'm we're, sure we're about- i the US people were informed that they would definitely take a stand against uh, their, the, their government's funding of these groups. But unfortunately, the US media is so controlled that they keep the US people in the dark. But um, I'm glad to see that, you know, you can tell that they would be able to make a stand about these topics. Exactly. Now, Mimi, we've come to the end of our show. So just give us your uh, your contact information and how people can keep up with you online. Um, if you would please subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, Syrian Girl Partisan, and my Twitter account, Partisan Girl, and my Facebook account, Partisan Girl, as well. All right, Mimi Alaham, the Syrian Girl, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. Be sure to stop by InfoWars.com and also InfoWarsNews.com. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcode with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.